In this video, we'll see how to blink the LED on our Thingy91 device by using an example in Visual Studio Code and how to flash the created code to our device with the programmer tool of the NRF Connect for desktop. However, in order to do this, you should have Visual Studio Code and NRF Connect SDK installed on your computer. To see how to perform these installations, you can follow the video from Nordic Semiconductor, which can be seen here. Once you do the installations, you can build and flash your blink example on the Thingy91. First, we are going to create a folder for our exercises as advised in this step. Then we are going to open Visual Studio Code and click on create a new application. Now let's open Visual Studio Code. And let's click the NRF Connect tab on the left pane. And let's click on create a new application. And we are going to following the steps shown here. The application type will be freestanding. What we are going to choose is the application template, which you can see here. We are going to click on browse and in the basic sample section, we are going to select the blinky template. You'll find it right here. On the right hand side, you can see the details of it and we can click on select. And we are going to rename the application name as shown here, Fundamentals Lesson Exercise 2. And we are going to click on Create Application. Here we can see the main.c, which is produced from the template. We can examine this simple code. The important definition here is the sleep time microseconds, 1000, meaning that the LED will be on for a second and then it will be off for a second. So we already performed this step and we are going to add a build configuration now. This will be the step that we are going to choose our Thingy91 device. Since the code can be run on other devices as well, we should have a separate build for each device or development board. Now we are going to choose our Thingy91 device. We are going to select Thingy91 underscore NRF9160 underscore NS. We are going to leave the remaining selections and check the enable debug options box. And finally, we click on the build configuration box and the build process is going to begin. It's going to take a few minutes depending on your computer's configuration. I'm going to trim that section to avoid losing time. Now we solve the build complete message and we can check the memory usage in here. And you can see it in this table. Now we are going to flash our code to our Thingy91 device, which has a different procedure than the other boards. You can see the procedure here in this link. And we are going to be following these steps in order to launch our application on our Thingy91 device. And we are going to do it in the next section of this video. As you can see on the right section, I've connected the Thingy91 device to my computer. And now let's open NRF Connect for desktop. We are going to click the open button for the programmer. And now we'll set the device in DFU mode by pressing the switch 3 while turning it on from switch 1. Here you can see that I'm using a straw to better reach the on off switch. As I turn it on, while keeping the switch 3 press, the thingy is recognized by my computer. And now we can select it by clicking on the select device button on the programmer. Select it. Now we need to select the firmware that we want to use. Let's click add file, click on browse, go to our project directory and under build slash Zephyr folder, we are going to choose app underscore sign dot hex file. And after choosing it, we are going to click on the right button, it will give us a pop-up window asking to proceed with write and we click on write. Our application took 18 seconds to be written on our thingy. Now we are going to turn our device off and on. 
to make the application run. And you can see that the LED starts blinking with one second delay. Now we are going to change the sleep time microsecond value to 100 instead of 1000. And let's see what happens next. Now let's save the project and let's build the configuration once again so that our changes take effect immediately. After the build is complete, you can check the date of the hex file to control whether it's updated. Here we can see that it's just been updated. So we'll again set the device in the FU mode. And in the programmer, we are going to select it and add our updated app underscore sign dot hex file. And we are going to click on write once again. Our updated build is uploaded on the thingy. Now we can turn it off and on to see the change. You can see that the LED started blinking 10 times faster than before. And we can see the LED clearly here. And we can see the LEDs light better in the dark. 